Welcome to Armchair Preaching, a podcast of the First Presbyterian Church in Lakeland, Florida. This is a podcast about God's Word, the beauty of the gospel, and what it takes to communicate that truth to others. I'm your host, Pastor Zach McGowan, and on today's episode, Pastor John and I discuss how events such as hurricanes affect our preaching preparation, our pastoral ministry, and we talk about this week's message in our series entitled Disquiet. We hope you enjoy the conversation. Welcome back, everybody, to Armchair Preaching. Back today, Pastor John. A little bit, we're a little bit more relaxed today. I this think, week, than, yeah. Than we last, don't have, we last, don't have, last we don't have Tuesday. the bullseye on us this week. Yeah, last Tuesday we were we we did we made the note that we were a little bit more uh, anxious. I yeah, mean, yeah. obviously that's the sermon <laughs> series, but uh, we had we had more uh, stress going yeah. into the conversation yeah. this week. Not not quite as much, but um, I do want to talk about that. A yeah. bit because it does obviously it affects uh, not just the preaching moment it does affect the preaching moment I think anybody who heard your message or my message yeah we will we will talk about it addressed it uh, we'll talk about how it was different this time than in previous times because it it is different when we were already in a sermon series on anxiety at least that part was yeah. at least we didn't have to make a radical <laughs> yeah, shift yeah, yeah. you know away from what we had already prepared yeah. but you know but e- even beyond the preaching for for a second. And you touched on this in your sermon on Sunday. Um, you're staring down, like you just said, bullseye. We've had these bullseyes before. How does that affect? What are what are you? What is your thought process going in? You know, Tuesday, Wednesday, as you're seeing. You know, what are the things that from a from a pastor, husband, father? Yeah. And then and then what's going through your mind as yeah. you're as you're yeah. thinking about what the weekend's going to look like for us and and things like that. Well, I, I, I we, and since this is armchair preaching, we're both thinking about there's a sermon coming yeah, still Sunday on Sunday. Comes. Sunday's not going to stop Sunday for a comes, hurricane. Yeah. So there's there, so there, we're both thinking about the sermon and then. And at some level, I'm I'm thinking about what does what we are are about to experience. We're going what we are experiencing as we have the tense build up to the to the hurricane itself. What impact is that going to have on what's get what gets said on Sunday? So yeah. that's so at one level, that's yeah. that's there for the for this for this for this discussion for the armchair preaching yeah. discussion. That's going to be there. But you know, we're not just preachers. Yeah. We are teaching elders, but we're, and we're not just teaching elders. You know, we are also pastors. Yeah. And as pastors, what what goes through the mind is the whole relational human side mm-hmm. of all of this is like, how are we going to do through this? How are our people going to do? And how am I going to do? How's my wife and ki- children going to do? Grandchildren, in my case, because they live here as well. Yeah. Thirteen of us are in in, in Lakeland right now. Yeah. So so how's everybody? going to do? And you were, you were even mentioning all the friends that you have on the West Coast, Dunedin. How are they, they, they yeah, doing? Yeah, exactly. you know, how's, and how are the people that, that we care about and those we don't know that we care about also yeah. how are they going to do it? and then and then you know you had you were great about this during the, during before and after the storms like about how can we lead yeah as pastors who have a group group of people around us how can we how can we mobilize this group of people to do good things yeah. for other people in our in our lives so yeah. that's all of that and then and then you know you uh, did you do this did you watch the all, all the news feeds and oh, and yeah. just kind of monitor i had like oh, four different gosh. four different news feeds that yeah. i was I was scanning cuz each one of them had a little something different and then during the hurricane i had another one that was the youtube guy uh, yeah. y'all whatever his name is uh, randy y'all or whatever yeah. what it is yeah i was watching him because he had guys all over the. That's when I. That's when I realized that there was 150 tornadoes had broken out yeah. with this with this storm because I because they were reporting on all these tornadoes tornadic cells, so all of that is on your mind as well. Yeah, and yeah, you as well. I, for me, you know, I start thinking. Well, one, you know, we talked about this a bit last week. The, the preparation side, you know, what and we were even. I think I would love to say that we have all this well planned out and we have these contingency plans and we pull the triggers as soon as it happens but which we generally do we, we have, have we yeah. have we have plans we have yeah. timelines and we have communication crises yeah. plans all of yeah. those things we have crises plans i think i what i what what we what we really did i think last week was we started thinking about how can we lead our people spiritually into the storm as you said and then how do we lead our people out of the storm right mm-hmm. so you have these two sides and so we we spent i spent a lot of time last week thinking through how do we gonna, you know we did the you and i did a facebook live um you and i both wrote little devotional things mm-hmm. you know that we posted um which i think 
gave people people comfort we we created a little um a little you know musical playlist for people to to focus on you know musically uh but then really it's what do you do next you know how do you lead out of the storm and that's where you are really yeah. calling people even before to say hey we're we're going to start collecting items we're going to you know even yeah. before the storm happened because we're thinking what's how do we lead outside the storm and then what do we do with cleanup efforts how do we respond to help our folks make sure that if they've got trees that are life threatening or things like that. So I start thinking about all those different things, the the leading into and then the leading out of. Yeah. But then I start thinking too, I'm sure you do this as well, the logistics of Sunday. What what if there's no power yeah. on Sunday here at church? Because yeah. we we didn't know you didn't have power and you until Saturday. Yeah. Saturday. Yeah. yeah. And you have you live two blocks away. Yeah. You know, so thank the which is odd because the church had power by Friday afternoon. Um so we didn't have, but I was thinking like, okay, well, if we don't have power, uh, you know, John, you know, I'll text John. We'll talk about doing maybe a combined service, something acoustic, you know, try yeah, to get, yeah. who can we get together to get a piano, you know, how, you know, those sorts sanctuary, of sanctuary. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Is, is it, is it okay if the sanctuary's got a hole in it, you know, which yeah, is yeah. not, that's well, a possibility. Could have, could have happened. I so mean, it's a possibility. There, there was, there was damage to, to the yeah. steeple. Yeah. Yeah. So do we go in, you know, all those sites, I start thinking yeah. about all the what ifs or, and what is the level of, I start, I always think about what's the level of damage that we had, that we have to have maintained to say, we're not going to have yeah. worship here on site. We're going to go COVID style and do some live stream thing, which yeah. we could have easily done. And I was already thinking through. If there's no way we can get in, if there's a catastrophic, like a tornado ran through the whole building from sanctuary all the way through Loudon Hall, there's no e- building east left to west yeah. or west to east, and there's no building left, then we, then I was thinking through what are the logistics of Pastor John and I do, you know, you and me doing some sort of a live feed from, you know, from the site. And Go back to people. COVID days. Where Going back did. to COVID days, you know. <laughs> um, so I started thinking about all of those kinds of things. And I don't know. I know you you kind of went back to your sermon on Friday after this. Yeah. Like, I had done a lot of prep work probably Wednesday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And then even when the power went out at my house, I was still, like, by candlelight because I mainly just wanted something to do because yeah. I don't sleep. Um, was working on my sermon. And then Friday I went back and— redid a lot of it you know it was really, hard yeah. i mean it was hard to do the to, to to write a sermon in the monday tuesday wednesday yeah. uh, of last week because that was when all all everything was gearing up and yeah. all the all do you the, try do you still try to get something on paper or do you're like yes. no i'm just gonna no, get I, well I have my to, brain. I, there's a certain amount that i have to get in paper no matter what yeah. i have to do that early early on uh, otherwise i i i i, I I'm, it's too compressed at yeah. that point. Yeah, I, I've I have yet to thank thank goodness I've yet to go in twenty four hour period of time or twelve hour period of time have a blank piece of paper and then have a f- completed sermon. Yeah, because that's it, it, it. Never works for me. I don't know about you. I I, I it never works for me to do. I, mean, I can do it, I suppose, if I if I needed to do it. And yeah. you and I could do. It. We could have done if if everything would have shifted on Saturday night. You and I would have pivoted. Yeah, we would have adjusted, adapted, and we would have done brilliant yeah. on Sunday morning. Yeah, because it's not us. It's we really are relying on the Holy Spirit to do yeah, His work, yeah, yeah. and 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 yeah. But we also rely on the Holy Spirit to do His work in Early. advance. Yes, through us and, and through I'm, our studies. And all that. I, yeah. I, I prefer that trickle of the Holy Spirit working throughout the week. Yeah, than but just... but it, so I so I always do something, and so I so I did something in advance. But but really, uh, you know, Friday was the that that was yeah. the main production yeah. time, and that was after you were out on front all, all lawn the, and you cleaning had, up and yeah, you had clean up at your house and cleaning they, up at our at house. Your, and we did a lot of that kids. on Thursday. Yeah, yeah. And, and and then here as well too. I had a hundred yeah. hundred plus folks here on yeah. on Friday and. I still my brain my brain still can't quite track what days of the week were what last week. You know, yeah. I'm like, okay, so the hurricane yes. came hit, through. Hit what day? You know? Two o'clock in the morning. Yeah, yeah twelve <laughs> to two or two in the morning on Thursday morning yeah. early, and then and I'm still having a hard time knowing what day today is. You know, thankfully, <laughs> thank it would have been worse if we didn't have church yeah. on Sunday. If we don't have church on Sunday, yeah, that kind of resets. Oh the, my the gosh, yeah. my my whole I can't. Um, well, that's interesting, is... though, that, that the idea of not having church on Sunday. So, um, you know, we talked about two churches, the, your sister-in-law's church mm-hmm. in, um, in Bradenton mm-hmm. and, and, and my former church in, in Dunedin. And I don't know about your sister-in-law's church, what kind of mm-hmm. damage, whether they still had power or not. Mm-hmm. But I don't think the church in Dunedin had power. Yeah. But they still worshipped. They still gathered, yeah. They yeah. went outside. 
They gathered. Yeah. They treated it like we used to do these sunrise services out on on mm-hmm. the beach. I led them for fifteen years with eight different churches, and everybody brought it up, brought her chairs. We had a long tradition of bring your own chairs, bring your own coffee. Everybody set up, set themselves up out mm-hmm. there, and they set a PA system up there. Probably had a generator going, mm-hmm. and they still had church. If the if if the worst thing happened, yeah, here in Lakeland, and the, and the tornado, like you said a little while ago, blows through and takes out the buildings, takes out the power, everything. We still have worship we here. We would still figure it out. Yeah, we'll we stand on the rubble, yeah. and we will we will still have worship. Yeah. Well, we in 17, when Irma came through, we had no power on Sunday. Mm-hmm. And uh, we had we had worship in, uh, we had a combined service in in the uh, in the sanctuary. And w- I remember very vividly, we, we all came together, uh, the staff came together, and uh, that, that was when I began. That's when I became the de facto emergency response manager because no one had any ideas. And I was like, well, here's what we need to here's do. Here's what I did in Charlie Francis and Jean in 2004 when I was in Haines City because I was kind of the de facto uh, emergency manager. I don't know how I get those positions. I just, you know, I, I think quickly and I can move things around. But then we said, well, what, what are we going to do Sunday? So there you go, folks. Zach's the guy you want to have with you in a crisis. No, 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 no please, right there. Please don't call me for crisis because uh, there's a lot of them. But it, but it, it's it, yeah. I remember sitting there and going, okay, well, what do we do if we if there's no? How are we going to do this? And you know, the, the great thing about our sanctuary is as long as there is a it's sanctuary, got light. a lot of light. It's a lot of light, and it, there's a, a natural acoustic, you know, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, resonance in the room. So and even have, without AC, there's enough height to it exactly. that they can draw that that, that early if, in the if morning. If it's hot, yep. it, the heat yep. will go up, so it's not it's not going to be that uncomfortable. It's not that uncomfortable. So we were able and to we have do acoustic that. instruments in there yep. already. Yep. So we were able to do that. I think. Uh, you know, we had a little bit of modern, you know, Be Thou My Vision on acoustic guitar and played piano. Nice. And we did like a little two, just two songs, uh, very simple liturgy. Um, we did a children's sermon, which was, I, I had to lead that. As much as I love kids and I love leading kids, I'm not great. I do not like children's sermons. I, right? I have a hard time with it. I did them for five years. Yeah. Five to eight years or so, first five to eight years of ministry. And so I have a whole collection of them. Yeah. So. I, I've done them and I, yeah. and I preach in Little Shepherd's Chapel and I love doing that. But yeah. it, the, I don't know, something when they're right there <laughs> and you make the, the, the critical error of asking an open ended question oh, to yes, children. Yes. Yes. Uh, and I, know, it, I knew going into you, it that you, you don't do you that. Get, but, you, you be yeah. prepared. But it was. Expect the unexpected. But you know, one of the things that is really significant that we get the privilege of seeing, and I'll say it like that, it's easy to say it post-hurricane, it's harder to say it pre-hurricane, that we get the privilege of seeing the community come together. And and we get to see it, yeah. you and I get to see it in in ways that Folk, you know, you everyone talks about seeing the community come together at post post hurricanes. Yeah. They see their neighbors helping neighbors, and in your neighborhood, I know that that happened. My yeah. neighborhood, I know yeah. that that happened. Neighborhoods, oh, that's wonderful, and I love that. But we got to see a hundred people show up twenty four hours after a hurricane and clean up this this property. And people say, "Oh, well, you're cleaning up your property." Well, we're cleaning up the property so that because people want to come to worship because that's a place of comfort and wholeness and rest. They and need to worship. They need that. They, yeah. they there's something in their souls that God has placed there to say part of the healing process is gathering, is singing, is praying, is opening up God's word. And I think especially in this sermon series that yeah. we were in, they knew yeah. that we we're going to talk about anxiety. Yeah. So they're yeah. like, and people did, people showed up on Sunday. Yeah, and, it was good. It was a good day. But good, on, good, but, good. but on Friday, the, the, the driveway was not safe. No, was I, I? didn't feel like it was safe. I don't know. If, I didn't. It didn't look safe to me. No, it wasn't. Um, no, it wasn't. That was, in fact, that's that one of the things that one of the last things I did on Friday during the cleanup was I blew off the north side you know, driveway because yeah. I knew that that's I didn't. The, the south side was already being done, but I, yeah. I wanted to have the the passageways clear. Yeah, a couple of stories by, out of the um out of the Friday thing that I thought really spoke spoke volumes. One is that uh, we had a we had a, a gentleman who was uh, Jim Hamer and me and a few others were back, back in the back taking down a tree with the chainsaw. We were on chainsaw, yep. and the tree was stuck in the ground, and a crossbar on, on the tree was stuck on the tree and on the ground. And we were we were scratch, sort of scratching our heads because we we're not in the tree service business, <laughs> and uh, but we love working chainsaws, and I did yep. too. I was, I was having a really good time with that. And uh, so, uh, but there's one guy came over. He he came, he was two hours early for an AA meeting. Yeah. And he said, I gave, I gave you guys about 30 more seconds, and if you didn't, have, didn't do anything in 30 seconds, I was going to come over and help. Well, 30 seconds passed, and he comes over and says, you don't need any help? And, and he said, I used, to do, I used to be in the tree 
business, tree removal business. Wow. I said, oh, we do need some help. How do you get this tree limb down there? What do we need to do? Turns out we have these conversations. Guy shows up in church on Sunday. Oh, wow. He's looking for church home. You know, it's just, it was just, that was great. The other one was the story of, uh, of Charlie. Mm-hmm. And uh, hopefully he's listening to this or watching this. And uh, but Charlie, you know, he called me up and says, I can't physically. He's got he walks with a cane. Yeah. And he gets some Charlie physical. Cash, lim- yeah. He gets some limitations with him. But he says, I'd like to be able to do something. He said, I've got a pickup truck. He said, yeah, Charlie, pickup bring truck. it. Yeah, and, he came, you, and, and he yeah. came. And I said, go see, Z- go yeah. see Zach. He'll put you to work. And I there. told him exactly because I, I knew. I remember. So this is where. This is where when you like you and I have done when you've done hurricane cleanup. You know where uh, after the second, third one, you kind of know where where people can be best utilized. Yeah. And I said, Charlie, that's awesome because sit I sit in your truck the entire time. Sit in your truck, drive the whole back time. there, let them load up your truck. You and don't mind doing that, and then drive, drive to, to the, the front. front. Yeah, and, and we he, had two trucks. We had two trucks going and the because back and forth. The back side where you, the back side where you were working, there was a big, big tree, and I had seen that coming in. I was like, oh, we're going to need a pickup truck, and I didn't. I just knew God was going to provide. Yeah. It. I mean, it's Polk County, the pickup truck. You, yeah, can, you like, a lot of them. can't yeah. swing a fish yeah. without hitting a pickup truck. But, but Charlie was there, and he said, I can't do it. I was like, you, you can drive, then you are a big pelt. That's going to be huge. Said, as long as you don't mind us burning through your gas today, um, and he didn't. And, and well, it's like you said, well, that, that was, was the thing. Just to, is that n- nobody can do everything. Uh, and, but everybody, you know, and not everybody can do something. Not everybody could have done what, not everybody had a pickup truck. Yeah. You know, so we had, we had some, I had some, some older folks come up and say, I just couldn't, I can't do that anymore. And I yeah. said, no, but your gifts are in other areas and do, do the thing that you can do. But, but he was able to do it. And I just thought that was really a, a beautiful example of, you know, again, the body of Christ coming together, being in the church. It was very inspirational. Well, you said that, and uh, it reminded me of a, of a couple that that showed up as well, similar like Charlie, and they they were uh, it's the McCullums. The, oh, I love the, the McCullums. The, the McCullums come to my Agape class. Um, they're so sweet. Sit sit in the front row of Agape. Sit relatively close in the classic ten thirty service, and they showed up and they said, obviously we're not pulling trees down and i said well we need the sidewalks cleared you know and and they said oh we can we can we can sweep you know we can sweep and and we can did. use a blower and i'm like go to it it's like because to me you know we're thinking of what is the barrier to entry on sunday morning it's the driveway and yep. it's the walkways and so they were clearing off the front especially for those in the front so you know our church we have uh that's where handy a lot of handicap spots are yeah. the people that are have the the least uh, balance and whatnot so it's stepping on a even a tiny uh tree l- l- limb, branch yeah. uh, that's going to potentially be very very that could painful. cause a fall it could cause yeah. a fall i mean yeah. and, and you and i know we've seen it falls turn into something big yeah. quick that's so, why when i was blowing off the blowing off the sidewalks yeah. all, what i was thinking about was fall maintenance right we do not need <laughs> that right. we do not need that <laughs> we don't need that and so people in our church do not need that there were stories like that all over uh yeah. friday and uh and um not 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 least which i told the story in church on sunday i didn't it wasn't planning on it but just when john when jason ron and i were decided to after after terry watkins made the suggestion that we go clear the tree across the street yeah. um which was a gigantic tree yeah and i thought yeah we'll just get a little bit and then we're we're almost done and then somebody else shows up to help and so we keep going we keep going until until bill and michael mutz show up with their chainsaws and then we keep all well, until it's all I, the way i will tell you this uh, th- this is a great sort of follow-up to it because i heard I, I love that story that you told on sunday but i just came from an event where bill was i, I gave the invocation yeah. bill was bill gave the welcome to the city yeah. um just just like at 30 minutes ago and Bill said, I said, I hear you showed up on the, you know, to take that big tree down. He goes, I did. He said, I wasn't planning on stopping. He said, but they were cutting it apart with toys. Yeah, we were. <laughs> no, that's true. Well, <laughs> said, because the one. The electric chainsaws. That's right. And so I said, how, well, how, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, how do you, because yeah, he's got like real chainsaws. Yes. I said, how do you have, he said, I grew up on a farm. What, yeah. And that's, he told me, he told me uh, after he said, that's what he did to earn money in college. Is that he would he'd have a chainsaw about once a month. Yeah. He would put a little advertisement, and he'd get all these little ladies who had to, something to clear. They'd call him up, and he'd clear it, and that's how he earned extra money in college. I love, I love I, that the mayor of yeah. Lakeland. I said you're going to put the far, part, Indiana farm boy yeah. came out there and cut down the, the one of the trees on yeah. his his park yeah, and, this, right. and the Lake Hollingsworth the uh, uh, trail there. Yeah, and uh, and and told and called the one the chainsaw that you guys were using, to, which is one I have as well. I have a toy as well. well we had, so, we, so in fairness, uh, just just I want to give Jason Rada, who's <laughs> massive construction guy here. Yeah, he had all he, he had, had a big, he had a big chainsaw that 
we busted through first. That that was the one he and I had. He had one, and I didn't have a chainsaw on so that tree. On that tree, oh, and wow. he and it just it torched it. I mean, it just now it was a battery powered, but it was a bigger one, right? Yeah. And then so then we were just kind of hacking away at it with little chainsaws, and then so Bill was like really that's, going that's, after, that's and funny. even. Even with his, the big boy, there was one chain. They had two chainsaws. One of them didn't, couldn't handle it. One of them, they had it, it went dead. I mean, and so, uh, and even with the one that he, he was finally using, and we were kind of like leaning on it to open it up, it almost. Did, he had to stop twice to get it to yeah. like. Re- I was like, man, this is this is beastly. But we got it out. I mean, we and it was a lot of fun to see all of us come together. And and I told I told Bill after it. He said, well, who needs Parks and Rec to do this? I said, just be careful. They'll cut the Parks and Rec budget if they yeah. know the mayor is going to go go out to town but that's funny it was funny it was but it, this is this is what happens this is yeah. what happened when the when when this is the great thing when the church decides there's a mission that is worthy yeah, yeah. you're not stopping it yeah yeah. You're not going to stop us. And people will join in. And just like, you know, you got somebody who showed up for, for an AA meeting all the way to, you know, to Bill, the, the mayor of Lakeland, yeah. joining in. Because he, he literally said, I saw you guys, we saw you guys, and we said, we got to stop and help, you know. Yeah. And then Michael was like, you know, this is great because I don't, you know, he's got a baby with, in a, in a, in a, you know, in a, in a stroller. And he said, now I can walk, walk the lake with that. Because yeah. that's, that's really what prompted is we saw people walking the lake running the lake walking around it, and yeah. getting into the road yep. and and it was dangerous and and that's what really prompted it was Terry seeing especially with all those trucks going yeah. by that you know the past week yeah and and to me I was thinking you know those some of those folks are are practicing not that they were in service with us but some of the very things that we've been talking about in this series which is getting outside yeah. getting you know taking time you know taking time for us taking time in nature with the lord mm-hmm. you know things like that and and for these kinds of it, uh, situations, who knows how healing that is mentally and emotionally and spiritually yeah. to just be able to walk that. And so if we can provide a little bit of safety to do that, we should. We should. So this is a bit of a soapbox moment. I know we need to take a break, but yeah. uh, but the church uh, gets a lot of criticism. Yeah. And some of it's earned. Some yeah. of it's earned criticism. Most of it is not. Yeah. Church gets a lot of criticism for being to this, to that, to the other. But I think the people who the same people who who make that criticism, the worst critics of the church, ignore all this. Yeah, all of this. Yeah, because while this is pretty visual, very vivid, very very you know very you can see it uh, um, uh, a lot. Uh, there's we do this we do this all the time. Yeah. We do this all the time. You yeah. mentioned the Kids Pack. You mentioned a number of ministries in your in your Merida, sermon. We had mix, uh, missionaries Merida, Mexico to folks Mexico were down there building down churches there and Milton, working I mean, on seminaries. Yeah. And so the church does this all the time. So so just the, a word for those who yeah. are who are listening right now and thinking about the 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 church itself. Don't listen to those those voices out there saying the church is is not what it should be. Yeah. The church is the greatest force for good in this world still to yeah. this day. Still greatest force force for work in this for good. And it's really cool to see when the church comes to, comes out like they did uh, post Milton and still are coming out and Wait. still need to come out post Milton. Yep. There's a lot more that needs to be done. Yeah, and for for anybody that that thinks this is the end, and it's not. I mean, we, we said it at the beginning, top of the show, but uh, even now, if you want to join in the the what comes next response, you know, the 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 finding the folks that are the hardest hit, you know, whatever extra hurricane supplies that you didn't use, bring them on yeah. to the yeah. church here. We're gonna get the we're, we've got we've got church partners in the hardest hit locations that we're gonna be reaching out to to find out not just how do we bring supplies, but how do we bring crews if crews are necessary or if bringing supplies is what's needed, then we'll just keep bringing supplies. But yeah. um, like you said, you've got a church in Dunedin uh, that, you know, your former church, I've got a church in Bradenton that we can be connected with. And we're going to start making those connections uh, probably in the next this week, the, the next 24 to 48 hours yeah. to find out what the, what the next best response is. So we are going to take a short break and then we're going to break down this week's uh, very important message. Uh, the last in our series yeah. disquiet. So we'll be, right back.
Welcome back, everybody. Uh, so this is the final week in our series, Disquiet. And uh, this was a, I mean, monumental moment in, yeah. in the 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 in the Bible uh, with the prayer that Jesus prays, or the prayers, I should say, mm-hmm. the multiple prayers that Jesus prays in the Garden of Gethsemane. Uh, funny thing about this passage is we actually preached this, I don't know if anybody, Dion, no one said anything to me, but I don't know Nobody if anyone said, said anything. We actually preached this same scene, different, I think different uh, gospel, I think we did Matthew's gospel, but the same scene back uh, a year ago when we did the prayer series, all right? So we did a prayer series, and we did, this was uh, this was one of the prayers, but nobody said anything because the, the scripture is so dense. There's right. so many different yeah. angles, and while that one, that uh, particular message, we were really focused on the prayer itself, which we both touched on the prayer. This time we were much more focused on everything else that surrounded that and what was yeah. internally going on with Jesus. So as you're approaching this from Luke 22, you know, you're jumping in this week and you're in the middle of an anxious moment. I'm in the middle of an anxious moment. What is the, what is the thing that's really driving your, your thought process, your prayer journey through this, this passage of Scripture in Luke 22? Well, to... To begin with, I think the 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 context, our context of a hurricane coming to us. Yeah. I tried to turn the volume down on that. Yeah, you addressed it right off the bat, yeah. and then then kind of turned the. But volume as down. I was pr- as I was preparing for this message, I knew I, I wanted to preach this message, mm-hmm. and so it's that part where in my in my own thoughts I needed to turn the volume down on, on that. Uh, it, it didn't make sense to, to not address it, of sure. course, to, to, to getting into the in, into the message. And so that, that that makes sense. But because really it's 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 about the anxiety of, mm-hmm. of Jesus in the moment. That was the focus of this dense passage mm-hmm. was was about the anxiety of Jesus. But it was this prayer of Jesus, what was going on with the disciples and, and Jesus and his messaging to, to them. And uh, so it just it really was to try and do justice to the text. That, yeah. that was more than anything drive, what was driving me. Yeah. And, then, and then, of course, okay, that's this, this moment here. And in this series on anxiety and on any moment that we have in our own life, what, what is this telling us? Yeah, yeah. And, I, and one of the things, so for me, I think, and we both really hit on this pretty, pretty significantly, was the the tension that we feel that you see in this passage between the um, the obvious faith that Jesus has in his purpose? You know, he knew what he had to do. He had the intellectual uh, knowledge. He had this the spiritual fortitude. Obviously, mm-hmm. he's Jesus, and yet at the same time, the emotional. Uh, weariness and the emotional, and I think y- you actually talked about uh, you. We both use the term kind of the tension of the moment. Living in yeah. that tension is the place of faith. Yeah. Whereas so many people, and and you actually hit this a little bit harder than I did, but I loved it. Is this idea of people get so torqued up about this passage because they want it to be black and white. They want it to be like, oh, if you have the faith, then you have the faith, then you feel the faith, and you think the faith, and, and it's always perfectly and, and norm. And you should never not have the faith, yeah. because if you have the faith, it's always going to be there. Yeah. It should, it should, there should never be doubt. Yeah. There should never be you know, troubles or yeah. struggle. And an anxiety or stress indicates doubt, and so that, mean, you know, that means sin. And we'll, we're looking at Jesus, and we know he didn't sin. So what's happening? You know, and I, I, I think that was the part for me that really was uh, in the in the passage. This idea of the great resolve of Jesus to follow the the will of the Father, uh, to be obedient, but at the same time the emotional turmoil that's still there. You yeah. know, um, and 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 so because I. I to me, I feel like for people of faith, and, and people really people not of faith too, when they're because one of the things you talked about in the last segment, the the idea of of you know the unfair dispersions that people cast on the church. I think one of the dispersions people cast on Christians in general is that we deny the the the. Um, the complicated nature of of mental health, emotional health yeah. problems. Yeah, yeah, that's I hear that a lot. We hear that, and you addressed it, and and 
but what I think the scripture is, it, it, and this is what the series has really been about, is that the scripture has no problem with the complicated nature yeah. of holding faith and emotional turmoil in tension. I think there's some. I think people also criticize the Christians, some Christians, for being too simplistic about the, those those uh, those those emotional issues. You know, if you just yeah. turn to Jesus, yeah. then you would not feel depressed. If you just trusted Jesus, you would not. You, you would realize that God's going to get you through life. And and they're 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 sort of skipping over the fact that I have to live 24 hours a day with what I am dealing with right now. Yeah. Whether it's going through a, you know crisis in life of some sort or just just this ongoing burden that I've always felt, so that you know okay, you can say that, and it probably and at some level is true, but there, you know, to live it is an entirely different thing. It's not it's not sim- simple. Yeah, you can't be simplistic about yeah. it. Yeah. You have to enter into the the messy parts of it. We've talked about this multiple times on this very uh, podcast here. You know, be, doing life. Being in ministry, being a Christian, anything, all of that is messy. Yeah, incredibly, incredibly. And, and the Scripture doesn't shy away from that. I think no, that's, it almost puts a spotlight on it. Yeah, even it, more so it, than we. Yeah. yeah, I think more so than I think. I, I think that's what I, is so. Um, it's one of the reasons I, I I went, you know, and I talked to a Christian psychiatrist because, you know, one of the things that Mark Weissman would say is like, actually, the some of the some of the techniques in secular psychiatry and psychology are incredibly come, come back from they go back come to back the from scripture. They come back from scripture, scripture, and they're actually pretty simplistic. What the scripture does is actually say it's really complicated. But here's the steps that you have to keep going back to over and yeah. over and over again. And when a self-help guru or a, a, a you know a, an MD psychiatrist or PhD psychologist says it, the the wider the wider uh, secular world will be like, oh, that's so brilliant. When a Christian says it, oh, you're being too simplistic. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, that's like yeah. so. It's like this is what I love about the the the, the text specifically here. Because it's one thing to say, well, Elijah, who is an uber righteous man, still had issues. It's one thing to say Moses, who is an uber righteous man, or David. This is why we picked the people we picked. We picked. The, we didn't pick these. I mean, we could have, but we did not pick these esoteric, never heard of characters in scripture. We picked the, the I mean, big boys. This is like Mount Rushmore of, yeah, of yeah. scriptural. I mean, these are the guys that. The, these are the men that that. That every, you know, we could have picked Naomi. We could have picked you know a, a, a host of other characters because there's all there. We could have gone to Job, which is very could have done Hebrews eleven Hall of Famers. Yeah, yeah, could have done all those, but we did pick the big ones to say, yeah, they're they're dealing with this. But what makes this Luke twenty two is this is the Son of God. <laughs> yes, this is the Son of God yeah. who, in his humanity, has this feeling of angst, disquiet, anxiety, stress. Um, yeah, I, to me, I think that's why it was so valuable to, to, to yeah. land in this. And, and you think about that, that, that Scripture didn't need to record these stories. Mm-mm. They didn't need, or they didn't need to record them this way. They could have made these people more one-dimensional. Which is what a lot we talked about this last week. What a lot of a lot of scriptural texts in other religions do, do. with their yeah, figures. They take yeah, it, they strip it out. We, the Luke and Matthew and Mark could have left this out entirely. Yep. Could have left out this moment of anxiety entirely. Just mm-hmm. leave it out. Yeah, and we would never have it for posterity's sake, and we never have it to be able to talk about it and say say okay, I mean, it still would have happened, but yeah. we would never known about yeah. it. But because we they chose to put it in there, we were able to look at that and go okay. Like you said, uh, like we talk, both talked about, Jesus, Son of God, you know, the eternal Son of God, had anxiety. Mm-hmm. It's not being unfaithful to have anxiety. Yeah, it's not. You're not a bad Christian mm-hmm. if you have anxiety, if you have stress, if you if you feel like your sweat is going to drop, have, pour out on the ground like mm-hmm. drops of blood. That's not being a bad Christian. Yeah. Like I said, I, like I said, that's just be, that's being human, that's and that, being that's human. that's what it does. Having it in the text, it 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 it, uh, it connects it to the lived human experience. Yeah. and I find that very helpful. Well, and that's why I, I I just I didn't. This was actually not in my notes, but I but the like the the just a few hours before actually preaching it, you know, I, I really wanted to 
to put that text in there that that Christ experienced everything as we you know the Hebrews the Hebrews passage where uh, it was tempted in every way as we were tempted and yet without sin. Anxiety is not a sin, but it is a temptation to sin. I mean, there's a lot of things that we can do in our anxiety that are very sinful, yeah. right? I mean, we can shut down and be la- you know totally lazy and to- you know just become more and more inwardly focused, more and more uh, uh, you know self absorbed and 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 the temptation for Jesus was there. I mean, he could have just tapped out, you know, I mean, the, the, it, because, and I didn't, this was, this wasn't, well, that notes. was, that was the temptation in the wilderness. That's exactly that what I was going to say. Yeah. That was in my notes. I didn't get to yeah. it. It was in Matthew four. That was the temptation in the wilderness, right? Yeah. Hey, Satan says just to Jesus, bow before me and easy and, thing. Yeah. yeah. Quick thing. No, no big deal. No, Come on. no cross, yeah. no crown of thorns, but, hey, yeah. but you still get to be the have all the kingdoms of the world. That's the temptation of Satan to yeah. Jesus. Shortcut yeah. the cross. And it was a real temptation. Yeah. I mean, we say temptation, oh, well, Jesus, it was in his head. Sort of, no, wasn't kind of, really, no, yeah. it was a temptation, yeah. um, which means there, and in the garden, you know, obviously, and, and I would want to get to this in just a second, but the, but there's 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 spiritual divine intervention that's happening. Angel shows up to strengthen Jesus. Uh, there which could have been it, which, angel which armies. It works. Yeah, yeah. there's angel armies that could have been right there behind, but but chose not to. Um, that's the thing I think that's so valuable, right? Is that there's all this kind of together in this, in and it's it's placed at the feet in the heart of the Son of God. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Talk a little bit about details in this passage, some that we both highlighted, some that you highlighted, I didn't highlight, some yeah. that neither of us highlighted. You know, I, I really, you talked about the garden imagery and the tempta- and tying that to the temptation imagery. So I wonder if you unpack yeah. that a little bit more. And then I, it, what I really I sp- appreciated about it was you tied it to the the encouragement of Jesus to his disciples pray that you do not enter into temptation yeah. which you know what's that you know what's the scene what's the setting it's the garden the temptation all of this yeah. the genesis so, passage so, so yeah there, that, that that was a that that was like a neon light when i first started looking at this that i got to talk about that that's yeah. that's going to be too 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 much too much of a connection to to not talk about it's like it, 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 that the the fact that there's a garden and there's there's temptation or a, at least a discussion about temptation was you know uh, harkened back to the to the genesis 3 genesis 1 1 through 3 uh, moment and that the temptation the prop the contrast between the temptation of adam and the temptation yeah. of, of of jesus uh needed to be talked about so that was that was fun to unpack yeah. that to be able to say that this this is this is the setting yeah you know so he doesn't just sort of blithely or, or mindlessly enter into a into a garden and it has no deeper meaning than that at all yeah. there is there is significance in the fact that this there's temptation there and then then he then to pray in that garden and to say to his disciples i want you i want you to pray not to enter yeah that that i want you to pray so that you don't enter into temptation yeah yeah that's incredible. Which is, and that's twice, just, be, that's twice, just before, yeah, he, twice, he, yeah. beginning after and yeah. end of that, but and that's that's before he goes to pray. He says that I want you to pray that you don't fall into the temptation. And then, then of course, for me, the question was, okay, well, what is that? What is he saying to us? It? It's not like they're going to commit sexual sin, yeah. in the in the garden while Jesus is over there praying. They're exhausted, yeah, you know. Uh, so, what is the thing he's he's concerned about? Yeah, and 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 it's pretty clear that what he's concerned about is that that with what he's about to go through. Uh, they're going to give up ship. Yeah, they're going to they they're going to they're going to they're going to respond with uh, with despair. They're going to respond with walking away from from the, and saying, "Oh, that, that, I guess that I guess the last three years of my life were a failure." Yeah, and uh, and that would be it. And he's saying, "No, don't don't give in to that." Yeah, yeah. So that was my those were my n- nuances to the to this text here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I hold... you know what I didn't do though, which you did do, which I really liked what you did is you 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 talked about prayer itself. Yeah. And uh, neither one of us did the John seventeen passage, yeah. but mm-hmm. it's on our on your mind. The whole thing is about prayer, yeah. and, that, and that type. But it was just the idea of, of prayer. And when I was start listening to you start going into this, I said oh, that would have been fun. Yeah. I should I should have done that yeah. as well. Yeah. Um, even though we both know that there's a whole sermon series coming up on on, on the prayer, Lord's prayer yeah. but when you can never say enough about the yeah. value and the importance and the model that Jesus gives us in praying yeah and i it's for to me i think that the the focus too on you know 
where, where, I, where, where I ultimately landed with this idea of Jesus on mission in his anxiety was that was the, that was, that's what propelled him out of the garden. That's what propelled him out of his comfortable place. That's what propelled, you know, I, I focused on that idea of as was his custom because Luke makes a, Luke makes a really big point about two things that are prevalent in this passage that the other gospels don't. One is that Jesus always went to the Mount of Olives. Yes. And that was in Luke 21. He talks about it, that every time he would go to the festivals, he'd go to Jerusalem. That's where, that's where he would, that's where he'd camp. I mean, and we, you know, we don't think about Jesus camping, but that's more than likely, unless you've watched The Chosen. The Chosen, he's if camping you watch all the Chosen, the time. he's camping all the time. But that's, that's pretty accurate. I mean, there were times where he stayed with people, you yeah. know, but that was more, that was more in. Once in, he got to villages or yeah. towns or. Yeah. And, and, and in Galilee where he knew more people, right? Mm-hmm. So um, where he had familial connections, relational connections, where the disciples had relational connections because they were all from Galilee. Mm-hmm. Uh, but in, in Jerusalem, it was, I'm teaching in the city, but then I'm leaving the city and I'm going to the quiet place and the, the nature and, and the, 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 re, the respite of this garden. And what he's doing is something that he's familiar with, is that constant state of prayer. And in in the original draft that this actually listed out just about every time leading up to this in Luke's gospel, it said just and it, it's all we read it often as throwaway statements, but it's it, they're not throwaway statements. You know, he it, it talks about him coming out of a state of prayer or going into a state of prayer. Uh, Luke, I've got him in front of me right now. Luke three twelve, Luke six twelve, Luke nine eighteen, Luke nine twenty nine, Luke eleven one. He taught about prayer in Luke's gospel at least five times di- in different ways, it, and that depends on how you count the thing. So, um, and this scene which is very climactic it's the pre it's the it's the rising action it's the if you're looking at this from a, a narrative structure uh this is where the action really starts to head towards the climax you know it's, it's, yeah. th- things start to really yeah, you almost see that yeah. you almost felt like you, all the all that had come before mm-hmm. all the the warnings of his own death they they come to this moment it's the it's the the quiet before the, the storm yeah it it's is. the fulcrum yeah. between yeah. The, the heading off the i mean the arrest comes after this right the after the trials and, while he was in still the speaking it says yeah. while was still speaking. Yeah. So uh, that to me was so so key, just in terms of yeah. from from a, from a from a, from the humanity side of it, uh, where Jesus is going back to a pla- place that he's familiar, going to take that moment of rest, to take those hours of rest because he's going to be on mission. Yeah. You know, well, that, I, I thought it was very helpful too, just to hear, hear that, especially when you summarized it at the end. You brought it all back into this idea of you know resting in the weariness. And then return to the mission. Yeah, you know, it says, resting in the weariness and return to return to the mission. Resting in the Lord, return and be on mission. Be on yeah. mission. Because um, that it, what I mean. What else is there? I mean, when 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 we're exhausted, we've been through a lot this this yeah. this week. You know, that is it's certainly not what Jesus was facing on the cross. But it, you can take that and say, okay, in our anxiety, what do we do? Yeah, that's the big question. What do we do? Well, and, and the thing that you did that I I really uh, I, I just kind of bounced off of this idea just really quickly, but I love that you made it a central point at the end was pray for another way. And I love that you actually added this, these two words without apology. I, yeah, I, yeah. I, I absolutely, because to, to me, this, this speaks to those folks who say faith, Christians are too simplistic because Jesus pray, and and again and I you know I talked about this a little bit in terms of going back through the series and what does Elijah do and what does Moses do and what does David do and all these things but to say it so bluntly that it's it's absolutely a place of faith to pray without to apology watch, to for watch something Jesus else. to read those stories and to watch watch Jesus do that it's the first half of that one sentence prayer or one sentence statement about his prayer um it's just it's it's uh, it, it's permission giving. Yeah, it it tells you that if 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 Jesus, who knows all the things that are going to happen, yeah, you know this this is, this is the, the the unpacking that I did with the, how the people's perception of they're a little troubled by this the passage. They don't like the fact that Jesus is is what they see as equivocating or wobbling on his commitment to go through with this. Uh, a even if it was just the physical torture, I'd be a little bit. That'd be dubious, dubious that'd about be, that yeah, as well. Yeah, I'm like, not sure I want to go through. Even do if that. I'm getting out of the tomb three days later, I still don't want to go <laughs> yeah, through. Yeah, I don't. That. Want, I'm gonna have a black eye coming That's out right, of that, right. and far worse. So I, I, I'm not sure. But you know, he, uh, that this is the response to that. Is that is that you know what he he just he set up for all of humanity, yeah. all who would come after him, the the understanding that we can talk to God about this. Yeah. 
and get, it was permission giving to say, you can talk to God about yeah. this. And this is where you start thinking about, like I said, the divorce papers get served, the bankruptcy papers need to get submitted. You find out about the cancer, you find out about the child who's gone astray or whatever, it, whatever it is. That's that, that you, you pray, you pray yeah. that, pray that, that something else happens. And, 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 and I, I do, I really love those two words without apology, without, without, don't, don't feel bad about it. Exactly. It, without feeling as though you're a bad Christian, you, you know, you've lost your faith because yeah. you're praying for, and because it, it's not that prayer, it's being able to accept, as we said last week, and you said it again this week, that we will pray that God change things, but also pray for the trust if he doesn't. You know, yeah. and that's to me, that's where faith really hits it. And that doesn't mean you're happy about it either. You no. know, it doesn't mean you're excited about it. It doesn't mean you're at uh, Jesus. You know, that's why that Isaiah 53 3, he's a man of sorrows acquainted with grief. That's why it's so powerful because Jesus went to the cross. He was not, you know, high fiving people on the way. You know, yeah. he was, he, it was, it was, it was, and, and the idea that you, you brought up is that, yeah, there is the physical torment and it was terrible. But the worst thing is that for the first time in the existence of everything, always, yeah. the Father and Son are somehow, we don't even, I can we can't even unpack how, that, how, how the Trinitarian, how yeah. that happens, but we know there's a separation that has never, yeah. ever, 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 ever taken place. And, and I dialed, dialed up a little bit more in the live services that is that um, uh, as the wrath of God is poured out on him, so he's experiencing the abandonment of God and he's feeling the weight of every human sin ever, you know, at, at the same time. So yeah. we can't, and we can't, we can't, we can't begin to imagine Come close that. to understanding. That. No. Well, we're going to take a short break and we'll get uh, to the final segment this week, talking to folks who are in their personal devotion or in a group study and and what what do they do with this? How do they how do they talk about this with one another? How do they pray through this with themselves? And we will unpack this in just one moment. So, uh, you know, th- this this week, I think uh, this whole series, deeply personal uh, and yeah. for a lot of people. Um, I think this is for folks that have that started doing a group study uh, w- with this series. I think it's a good one to do a group study with. Um, and for those that aren't doing a group study yet, you can always go back. That's why it's great that all these things are archived. So they're like, hey, we want to do a sermon. We want to do a group study on anxiety. Well, hey, we got, have we we got, got, we got six got weeks for you. Yeah. 12 sermons yeah. and uh, six weeks worth of podcasts yeah. that can help you out with that. Uh, but all, this, of which, all of which has been, if you go to our YouTube page, just to put this plug in here, our YouTube page has been redesigned, restructured. Way easier to find. So it's way easier to find the, the things that you're looking for. Yeah, yeah. All the series now, they've always been organized according to sermons series, but they've been harder to find. Now they're easy to find. I mean, I think to this quiet series right there at the top of the page. Um, So actually I noticed this week and I was looking, going back to find yours. Normally I have to go scroll through things, but it was was right there. It's all organized. And uh, now the last four weeks of this series, we've had video uh, podcasting too. So uh, which is all there as well under the podcast page. But you know, John, as you're as we're thinking through this uh, close of series in groups or personal devotion, you know, what are some of the things? What, what's something that you would maybe start with this week with somebody saying, like, "Hey, you know, you're looking at the the, the final moments of Jesus' life, of earthly life, um, this incredibly anxiety ridden prayer, but also acceptance." How, how are you talking to people if you're leading their small group? What do you what do you what are you talking to people about? I, I, a couple of things that just maybe broader statements to say before you get into the into the passage itself here is that I think last week and this week both show what uh, mature Christianity can look like. I like you said can look like. Yeah, that what it can look like. <laughs> what we're shooting yeah. for, right? We're shooting for, yeah, because yeah. because what what Paul you know Paul does not have the the burden removed from him. Yeah. But he's given a purpose with that burden, and so that's not you know it's not a very satisfying thing mm-hmm. for for a a younger newer Christian to to 
to experience, and and certainly not the health and wealth preaching that's out and out out and about saying that that's never going to happen to you. So it, I think it's an important thing just to maybe even to talk about if you have a group say what is it what what is what makes this response of Paul and now Jesus himself. Um, different. Yeah. What is it that makes it makes this different that that is is a sign of that spiritual depth mm-hmm. and that spiritual uh, maturity. So that that's that's one thing that comes to mind. It's more of a general statement. And another kind of general statement is that even though we were in a hurricane this this last week, um, we had been in non-hurricane settings mm-hmm. for f- at least four out of the six weeks. Yeah. <laughs> It's not those odds are not very good, it's but not the, great, yeah. uh, but uh, for four out of the six weeks we were not in a hurricane. Uh, the point is that is that the time to prepare for any crisis in life is not in the middle of the crisis. Yeah. yeah, the time to think about these types of things. What's my response going to be when some some bad thing happens, and it will happen because you don't get out of this human life. I don't know anybody's gotten out of human life without some tragedy. Yeah, I know people who are who are ridiculously successful in their in their lives and yet when you listen to their stories of their family yeah. they've had they've had crises they've had tragedies in their life yeah. and the, the very kind of things that we've been talking about in this series and they would have needed this kind of inner spiritual fortitude to, and they did need they called upon that inner spiritual fortitude uh, the time to prepare for that yeah is not when you're in the crisis. So yeah. this is almost an, an appeal to get into groups and to get into conversations with other people about these types of things. So there's a couple, a couple of thoughts out, off, out of the bat. Yeah, and I, w- I would just jump off of that. I, I would say, I would if I was you know in a group setting saying, where do you feel like you are in in relationship to those anxiety moments? So like you said, yeah, everybody goes through them. And I, I've heard, uh, and maybe this is a little bit of a pessimistic viewpoint, but uh, I think it's pretty accurate. Everybody is either um, about to go through a crisis moment, they're in a crisis moment, or they've just come out of a crisis mm-hmm. moment. Now, those that time frame, that time period, might be very long. Yeah. I mean, you might not have you 25 might, years. Please. You might be 25 years of not not in the crisis moment, but you're heading there because that's how time works. You're you're always moving. It's like it's like the old joke, everybody's terminal, everybody's moving towards death. Yeah. I mean, we're not moving away from it ever. Yeah. So, where 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 do people feel like they're at? You know, I say, are you are you pre you haven't had a crisis in a while. You haven't, you know, I mean, I think if you're in Central Florida, you some level we've of all, crisis right now, one. right now. Yeah. Um, so what? Are you, so where are you at? You know, have you just come out of one? Are you still healing, recovering from one? And 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 these are not all. Th- those timelines are never um, clean. So if you've had a crisis, you might be heading towards the next crisis. That might be twenty years, five years down the road, but you're still healing from the previous yeah. crisis. Or, so, or it might be twenty five minutes down the road. So you, you, that yeah. that we don't know. We yeah. have back to back hurricanes. So yeah. you could have back to back crises, which is you know you know this just the unpredictability of life is something else to to weigh in. So I would say you know what for people you know where where do they feel like they're at um, you know in the in in the crisis anxiety moment, and if they find themselves, what can they do if they're you know what can they do to prepare? You know what sort of things have we talked about in the last six weeks, twelve sermons, six podcasts mm-hmm. that have really jumped out? This would be one of those go back retrospectively and look at those you know, the different, the different, uh, topics that we've covered, the different passages that we've yeah. covered and, and what can you do now? Like you said, the time is before the crisis, not during the crisis. What can you do now to get yourself spiritually stronger in anticipation of what comes yeah. next or to help somebody who is in the crisis, you know, to, yeah, to be there point. with them in the crisis, because whether we are going into an immediate crisis, there's probably we, we somebody, somebody in your circle that's going through a, a an yeah. even bigger crisis than a hurricane. Not to say that the hurricane is not a gigantic crisis, but there are folks that are like, like you talked about in your message, there are people that are had the hurricane, but they also have divorce papers. They're in the hurricane, but they also have bankruptcy, and this just made it a lot worse. They, mm-hmm. they're, they're in the hurricane, but they're also flunking out of school. You know, so you, you might be yeah. one of those that, yeah, you had some storm damage, which is not great, but who is in our world that we need to be kind of pouring into with some of the things that we talked about? Um, one of the one of the, th- the thoughts that and this might be an early in in a in a group discussion. One of the things that is 
prominent in this particular version of the Garden of Gethsemane story is the physical toll that this anxiety is playing mm-hmm. on, on Jesus. Um, Jesus is having, and and you mentioned we don't know if if the sweating drops of blood was a, was a metaphorical uh, kind of description or it was literal. Yeah, we both could have been an abs. There is a medical condition. You were brave enough to actually say the word. Yeah. Uh, I had it in front of me and I was like, I'm going to mess <laughs> that up. I apologize to all my doctors on, in the live I think services. it was pretty close, man. I, I think it was pretty close. I I had practiced saying uh, <clears throat> the, what is it? Hem- <laughs> hematidrosis or something hematidrosis, like that? Hematidrosis, which sounds great to me. I, I, I looked at it and I go, I practiced that. I can't say it now because it's just not working for me. Yeah, hem- hematidrosis. He, he, yeah, well, <laughs> but we don't know. But whatever it is, there was a physical reaction from Jesus, and I would say, what are the what are the anxiety points that cause that physical kind of reaction? There mm. is a level of anxiety for everybody where there is wow. some physical. This is a great. This is a great. Yeah. Is a great question. Okay, in, in in a group setting. Yeah. What is the what is the physical manifestation that you personally have experienced during times of stress? Yeah. Yeah. What have you felt? Yeah. What about, do you have any specific ones? Do you have a physical tick, tick? What do I feel? Yeah. You know, the two, one of them, one of them is mostly after the effect. Mm-hmm. And I think I mentioned this, I may have mentioned this last week on this podcast here that I had a friend who was an anesthesiologist yeah. and when he retired, yeah. I said, what do you notice about retirement? He said, how stress-free I am. Yeah. He didn't realize how much stress he carried it all around. with yeah. him, you know. Mm-hmm. So, so I, I, the part, one of them is how much I noticed that, like, like I felt even on Friday mm-hmm. after the storm had came through, had come through, I was relieved. Yeah, I was, I felt relieved. But Monday, Monday, Wednesday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, I felt anxiety. So I just sort of realized that you just carry that. Mm-hmm. And in fact, in my prayer at the ten thirty service on in the live service, I, I asked everybody, said, I want you to bring to your mind. Whatever stress or anxiety that you are dealing with in your in your life right now, and I want you to I want you to locate it in your body. Mm. I want you yeah. to find out where where that is. I know I have this. Um, I have I carry it sometimes in my sternum as well. Yeah, and I was you know one time I thought I was having a heart attack, mm-hmm. but it was people do people but feel was, like they do. Yeah, yeah, feel- but it was it was the it was in my joints. Yeah, and I was in, in my sternum, so I, I I feel it in physically in certain places. So other people talk about shortness of breath. Yeah, uh, other people I get talk chills. About, I get chills. Chills. I get chills, and I get a pain. I get pains in my neck and my lower back. Uh, yeah, yeah I, like even right now, I still feel like pain in my yeah. neck and my lower back, and I'm. Like my body temperature drops precipitously. Yeah. I mean, I could be it could be ninety five degrees, but like, like during the hurricane when like the power's out and the now thankfully the temperature didn't rise all that high because we had this little cold front that came in that God sent in to kind of weaken the hurricane. Yeah. I believe it yeah, that He weakened yeah. the hurricane through this cold front. That's what I was. Pr- you talking about what I was praying for without apology. I prayed <laughs> without apology, Lord. I want the, please please don't let it be miserably sweltering. Huh, well, and, and it, I wanted that. I wanted that cold front, which they kept talking about this cold front. I, just, I want to break it apart, just annihilate it, and then bring in this wonderful, beautiful weather, which reminds us why we love to live in Florida. Um, but I, f- even if it's like 95 degrees, I will get cold. I mean, you'll see me bundle up, and I'll just be people are like, "What are you doing?" Yeah, I'm like, yeah. "Well, I'm cold. I, I just I get that that kind of thing." And uh, so, some of the physical manifestations yeah. of stress and anxiety yeah. uh, would be interesting uh, thing to talk about. Just personalize it. Yeah, like, p- personalize it in, in, in your group. And, and then, what are the things that actually trigger that? Because not every anxiety triggers like me having cold chills, but they're yeah. like like hurricanes do. Like yeah. I will start getting chills. Um, but then right after, I don't have the chills anymore, and then the power's out, and I need the AC. Yeah. <laughs> And maybe to the follow up to that was what 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 is the the thing that shifts that that makes it go away? Yeah, yeah. You know, describe the thing that you know because you could still we're still dealing with the after effects of the storm, and yet the chills and 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 the stress points and all they they go away. What 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 causes that to go away? And I think one thing because both of us talked about this, and I I I think this is a, an important point to land on in a group or in a personal devotion is how might obedience to God's will, how might being on mission, which is the way I put it, you put it being, I think those are two sides of the exact same coin, because obedience to God's will will put you on mission, mm-hmm. I think, every single time. How, how might that be the antidote or part of the antidote to our anxiety and stress? Yeah. And, and what could that look like for you? Um, 
we gave two examples at the top of the show of people who raised their hand and said, I want to help. I don't, I don't have a lot of physical ability to help. What can I do? And yep. both of us had a response. And those people had the mentality, the McCollums, Charles Gash, had the mentality of this is not – whether they had this, this was not – I don't know if this was probably at the top. I think the top of their mind was altruistic. They want to help other people. They yeah. want to help the church. But, but they felt great. They felt great in the process. Yeah. When everything else feels not great, that being on mission – kind of being others focused. I talked about it in my sermon, you know, I wanted to see my, my group. I wanted to see my parent group. We canceled on Wednesday. That was making me anxious because yeah, I was, I was making, I was anxious for them. I, you know, you, you talked about being anxious for the people in the church and I was like, I just want to see them. And I was like, well, we did learn something in the pandemic, right? We can see each other. So we got, you know, it's probably, uh, not the full group, not 35 of us. I was on. part of that group too. Yeah, yeah. Well, I was, I was part of that group that day yeah. because, uh, Lauren came walking by with her, with her computer. Oh, that's right. That's right. I, that's I, had right. Her, I, like... I had her child on my lap, I think at the time. <laughs> yeah. So uh, when you, when she walked by, but I just felt like, you know, how, we need to be together. We need to be on mission together. We need to re- be reminded that, and it felt better. I felt even before the storm, I felt some sense of ease. Yeah. And I know you did. When you had the chainsaw post, post-hurricane, post I could see it. There was there's something oh, about need, that yeah. physical, like, I needed it. doing something, right? Yeah. Like, the, And you could see that you made a difference, right? And not everybody has that ability to pick up a chainsaw, but they do have the ability to do something yeah. you know go go e- get even the encouragement them I and mean, i talked to someone the other day about this that the the ability to encourage another person when they're feeling the anxiety is a true huge, gift and huge. not everybody has that gift and when you exercise that gift it, it makes a huge difference huge so i that that would be probably how i'd even close out the whole series in a group is saying you know how might the obedience and the mission of god be part of the antidote it's not the, the whole antidote that's yeah. why we've talked about all these different things getting the rest, getting in community. I, I love how you've made a point just about, I think about every sermon talking about going and getting the medical or, or therapeutic help, if that's part, I mean, that's part of it. But a, one part of the antidote, I think it was a much bigger percentage than we give it credit for, is being obediently yeah. on mission. And, and you see that in every single story, every single story, the person who's anxious what happens right after they, yeah. they they go to work and it's and it's and it's not that the anxiety's gone right they go to work in the middle of the anxiety yeah elijah still has the threat from jezebel david still has the threat from saul yeah, yeah, and yeah. then later he picks up different threats right yeah. um moses he, he, he goes. Big, he goes right from one anxious. I don't want to do this. To okay, this is the okay, reason I didn't want to do this. And right? I got a tiger by the tail. You yeah. know, and and so and Peter uh, and Paul. I mean, and and obviously Jesus. I mean, these are all people who are dealing in the middle of their anxiety by saying, "Okay, Lord, we're going to be obedient to you on yeah. your mission." So, I think that would be that 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 having a group kind of brainstorm and maybe even as a group, what it could be your group mission. Right now, if you're love if you're a Florida, uh, if you are a Florida uh, person, if you're here at FPC, or if you're in this and you're listening and you're not part of FPC, um, but you're in a group, what could your group's mission be? Mission trips, mission. They don't have to be these gigantic productions. No. They could just be saying, "Hey, you know what we're gonna do? We know that there's a lot of people who don't have diapers in the middle of this for their kids. So yeah. we're all we're gonna do. We're just gonna collect diapers, or." bottled water or whatever. And or we got elderly people in our community whose yards are a mess and could use some help. Yeah. And we're not going to wait for somebody from for for somebody of quote unquote authority to tell us. Yeah. We're just going to go ask the question yeah. and bring the rakes and the chainsaws even if they're toy chainsaws and, <laughs> and, and back to and that help, again. And help. Uh this has been a great series, John. I, yeah. I and I've appreciated all your messages. Uh yeah, likewise, I've, yours I've also, as well. I've also appreciated our conversation here at Armchair Preaching. I hope other people have. If you've missed any one of these messages in our series entitled Disquiet, you go to our website, fpclakeland.org, go to the sermon page. Uh, the worship page and the sermon archive tab. Uh, you can watch complete services, both classic and fine. You can also find us on YouTube, youtube.com backslash FPC Lakeland. As Pastor John mentioned, uh, much more organized on our YouTube channel now. Yep. It looks way better. Yeah. And uh, appreciate the hard work that went behind the scenes to make that happen. Uh, I'll tell you this. I, I, I didn't use the word uh, disquiet a lot. Yeah. 
in my vo- usual vocabulary. Yeah. But it's it's locked in now. Locked I'll use it. Down, I think yeah. I'll use it all yeah. the time now. Yeah. And does. now and now I'm reading books and I'm saying they re- they said it like ten times in yeah. that in that one book. So yeah. I see I, it all the time now. Yeah, it's it's amazing. Uh, also, all this is available on the Church Center app. If you don't have the That's Church right. Center app, you can download that from your app store and uh, search for First Presbyterian Church Lakeland in Lakeland, Florida. You can connect with us, and then uh, the sermons are right there on the front page. You can click on that sermon, and it'll take you to our website, um, as well as um, find many other uh, opportunities to connect. And wherever you're listening to this podcast, whether it's Apple Podcast or Spotify um, or SoundCloud, or if you're watching us, hello, on YouTube, make sure you hit the subscribe button on your YouTube or whatever channel so you can be notified when a new episode drops. you got to hit that bell icon if you're on YouTube um, or change your notification settings. Someone said, hey, I subscribe, but I'm not getting notified. I'm like, oh, well, there's it's actually two steps. There's yeah. one more step. Yeah. Uh, if you're on YouTube, you got to hit the bell icon and you got to make sure your, your notification settings on your phone are different so that you can be notified when an episode of a podcast that you subscribe to is drops. Got, a, got a new episode. That's yeah. a lot to say, yeah. hey, follow us wherever you follow us. Yeah, that's right. And share it, right? I mean, this is one of those kind of series that... Uh, by design. By design. We it, knew it's kind of the felt needs of, of, of people. Yeah. We wanted to, we wanted to tap, tap into that. Yeah. Uh, we, we will do more of these yeah. types of things. We're, we're tapping into what people are actually experiencing yeah. in life. We try to do that with every s- yeah. sermon, but yeah. this whole series has been yeah. shaped on that. And this is one of those series, I think, we, you and I have talked about, what are the sermon series or what are the sermons that kind of never expire, you know? Yeah, this is evergreen. This this is one of those that we kind of can live in our archives where people can kind of say, hey, this, you want to know what the preaching ministry of FBC looks like? This is a good representation. This is part of the the representation of of who we are as a preach, as as a preaching ministry uh, here at FBC. And I've been, uh, I've been really pleased with how this has yeah, turned out. It's been out. a great series. Been pleased with and that. And we have the uh, so so uh, next, we have the Lord's Prayer is which coming is, up to me next. An amazing follow up uh, yeah, to this hand and glove. They fit. They fit so well together. Because what did we just talk about? We just talked about the Lord praying, and yeah. now let's talk about the Lord's prayer. We're going right? to be breaking down the Lord's prayer <laughs> yeah. uh, for the next uh, six weeks. Yeah, and and obviously a big part of the faith response to anxiety is prayer. Prayer, and Jesus does it. Elijah does it. Moses does it, all of them. I mean, and so how do how do we how do we Lord teach us to pray? That's what we're we're looking at. So uh, this week, uh, Pastor John is in classic. Uh, Josh Schweitzer is in Vine. Actually, very rare. Something very unusual. Happened. Something this week. Uh, very uh, unusual. Uh, ba- tell baby, people. do we tell them? Yeah, we should tell them. So ba- baby you and Walter, I, you and I are going to be in the same service because of because we are baptizing uh, together. Walter yeah. Lee Anderson Butler, who is the child the two month old, almost yeah. two months old, or just past two months old, a child of Anna and Noah Butler, Anna, who is our children's ministry director. So yeah. this is going to be exciting. excited about this. And we are rarely in the same service. Uh, that's, that's, that's special. Uh, unless there's a funeral. Um, right. Which we'll talk about that next week a little bit, but uh, funerals and weddings and things like that. But uh, yeah, so it's going to be fun. It's going to be exciting. Um, I'm excited to kind of be able to be in a service and assisting and not uh, preaching. Um, uh, it's good to good to kind of be on. Feels I, like a week off. Feels like a week off. It's what I used to do in my old church all the time in the traditional service because in our old church we actually had we, we, I would I would assist in the classic or the traditional service and preach in the modern service. So that's that was my my rotation my cadence most weeks. Um, so I haven't done that really really significantly here in a long time since uh, uh, several years. So it's it's always fun to be on the the, the south side of the building. Um, on the south side of the sanctuary. So yeah, yeah. We're, we're going to have fun with that. But anyway, look forward to that and the, the, this new series. And um, John, thank you, as always, for hanging out for That's an nice. hour. Always a pleasure. And uh, Thank you for watching. Yeah, we will. Oh, yeah, thank you for watching. And we will see everybody next time. I could time. say that now.